Hello and welcome to the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting on July 24th, 2024. The time is 7.05. We have all members present except Laura and staff present is Aaron Jock. Um, first up on the agenda, the chair's report, that's me. I have nothing today. Um, Dave Zomek, director, is out. So we're going to move on to land management updates. Um, no conservation land use applications. The open space and rec plan. Do you want to give us an update on that, Erin? Yeah, so um, public comment is still open until the end of July. It, um, I have received comments from a couple commissioners, which were excellent. And thank you guys so much for taking the time to go through those comments. Um, I did talk with Michelle about that. And she asked if commissioners comments on the on the plan or on the, you know, um, action items, goals, objectives could be shared. And so I will share those with everyone um, just to get kind of the creative juices flowing in terms of like things we can do to improve the plan um, and the action items and so forth. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's posted on the town website. Um, if you just do a simple Google search for Town of Amherst Mast Open Space and Recreation Plan, the documents, the re survey results, um, and our results from our public information sessions are on there as well as our draft goals, object ob objectives, and action items are all listed there. Thanks, Erin, and thanks everybody who's commented. Um, yeah, I would I would love to just sort of get some um, inspiration from other people's thoughts. So I look forward to seeing those comments also. Um, land management subcommittee, Alex, you wanna take the floor for that one? Sure. Um, the last time we all met, the subcommittee handed out the agricultural um, policy and draft for you folks to look at. And at the time we forgot to suggest a deadline for getting it back, you're getting your comments back. So um, Aaron, you're gonna have to help me out on what we thought um, because of the number of meetings that are or are not going to happen. It was sometime in August that we would like to have them back. I think the deadline that we had talked about was August 14th, which would have been the Conservation Commission meeting that is canceled, but it would give us a chance to get the responses and collate them in time for our meeting the following week. Right. So if commissioners could provide comments, if they're so, uh, if they so desire, to Erin, she will put them together and distribute them to Bruce, myself, and Michelle. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alex. And and also the intention is that we could be giving you sort of pieces of this to uh, digest a little bit of a times at a time. So then um, there'll be some next up items coming to you also soon. You muted yourself, Michelle. Con uh, CPA liaison. So Jason, you had had expressed interest. Did you have any more thoughts on that? No, I, I I would like to do it. I would like to be involved more. So, you know, whatever uh, whatever you need from me to 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 do, if if I gotta notify somebody, or we're in a secret handshake, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> Um, we just need someone to make a motion to appoint you. I can't do that, but that would be the next step. And then I would offer uh, to, you know, give you some clip notes if you wanted to do that before it starts and it won't start for a few months, but. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Jason. And looking for a motion to appoint Jason as our CPA liaison. So I moved. A second. Is that moved by Andre? Yes. Seconded by Rachel. Um, Rachel? Aye. Andre? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Alex? Aye. Jason? Aye. I don't know. I abstain. You can vote for yourself. Um, <laughs> sure. I'm an eye. Aye. <laughs> All right. Unanimous. It'll be great. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, right. And Aaron, you'll just communicate that to, uh, I guess, Tom Bachelman and Etc. Okay, what do we got? Hearings scheduled for. Sorry, what time is our first hearing scheduled for? Seven thirty. All right. Um. Let's go on to other business. 
We have a request for a minor administrative change to the order of conditions for DEP number 089726, installation of EV charging stations at Hopkins Meadow Apartments. Um, Andre, do you wanna jump in with something? Yes, um, the, the minutes. Oh, thanks. I had a comment on the minutes. Okay, do you wanna, I, let's backtrack to the minutes and get those over with. Um, do you wanna communicate them? Yeah. To Bruce? Uh, just, uh, just a uh, suggestion on, uh, on the minutes. Uh, now at the top of it, remember I joined by phone, but I couldn't speak. So I was unable to vote in any of the votes. So perhaps a uh, a note at the top um, next to join by phone, and then uh, something like uh, I don't know, um, uh, Gadare did not vote uh, today, and then maybe on each of the different votes where it says everybody else voted in favor or everybody voted in favor, so on. Just a little something uh, that uh, Gadara did not vote uh, this day. Thank you. I missed that. Yeah. No. No problem. And Bruce, I um I can take care of that because I uh, have almost a near finished draft, so I can make that edit. Thanks. Do we want to approve the med the minutes with the suggested edits then? Okay. Yes. What are the dates and the minutes? I move to. Approve the minutes with our suggested uh, edits for uh, what was it, 6 20 24? What was the date on that? I believe uh, it was 6 24. 6 26. Or 6 26. 6 26 24. I second that. Andre on the motion. Jason on the second. Rachel? Aye. Andre? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Jason? Aye. Alex? Aye. I'm an aye. Thanks, Andre. Okay, back to our um, request for a minor administrative change. Aaron, do you want to give us a little summary on this? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so a couple months back, we approved some stormwater improvements at Hawkins Meadow Apartments. Um, I recently received a um, electrical permit application to, for the Hawkins Meadow Apartments to install um, EV charging stations. And I can do a quick screen share to show you what the work location is. Um, so this is on the um, southwest corner of the um, facility. The chargers themselves are going to be located in the parking lot, and there's going to be a small um, conduit trench um, between the chargers and then extending to um, the meter socket and panel. This is really minor work. Um, they're, they are kicking off um, next week with a pre-construction for the um, uh, overall stormwater improvements that are proposed on site, and they're going to be installing the full erosion and sediment control measures for that project and um, doing the, the full replacement work for those stormwater structures in advance of this work taking place. So they plan on finishing that work prior to doing the EV, installing the EV charger stations. I have no problem with this, um, and I think it's better that it's integrated now as part of the work before um, the work kicks off so that I have it on my radar screen for monitoring. Thanks, Erin. Any questions from commissioners? Yeah, did, I'm assuming the meter socket and panel is functions as like an inverter or a transformer for the system that they don't have any other structures needed. Right. Um, they're connecting to an existing pole, and then that pole has existing poles that carry the um, overhead lines out to Route 9. Okay. okay. Um, if hearing no more questions, looking for a motion to approve the minor administrative change to order of conditions to EP number 0890726. So moved. Oh, I see a question from Bruce. It's moving. Oh, do you want a yep. second? <laughs> Alex got the motion. I'll second. 
I'll give Bruce a second. Rachel? Aye. Andre? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Jason? Aye. Alex? Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, um, let's do emergency certifications. Hot wine lane replacement of beaver fencing. So I just want to give a thank you to Aaron for reaching out to MSPCA and getting a grant for some beaver fencing to um, um, avoid having to trap and kill the beavers. So thank you, Aaron, for that um, intervention. And is there anything else you want to talk about other than? No, it was a replacement. There was fencing there that had failed and the beavers were plugging up the culverts. Those culverts will be replaced. Um, I don't, you know, at some point in the future, the DPW has been working on a grant to replace those culverts, which are pretty badly failed. So this will just be sort of a Band-Aid um, to keep them from plugging and keep the water moving and keep the beavers from needing to be um, trapped. Any questions, commissioners? Okay, um, it looks like our motion is rolled into one. So the next one is the Cherry Hill soil remediation. Yeah, um, so there was a, um, there's a, a pump station at Cherry Hill. And to be completely honest, I, I'm not entirely sure what the pump station is associated with, but I assume, the um, uh, irrigation <laughs> system um, associated with the golf course. And um, the there was a piece of equipment, like I don't know if it was a generator or a piece of equipment in the shed, which um, sprung a leak and the, the material was released outside of the shed. And so the town hired a um, licensed um, uh, a company that does soil remediation work um, to assess the, you know, the level of contamination and hired a company to come out and do the soil removal. So the work has already been done. It was really a minor amount of material removed. The, the contaminated soils were removed and replaced and the site has been stabilized with the seed and straw. You're muted, Michelle. Any questions, commissioners? Okay. Seeing none, I'm looking for a motion to ratify the emergency certifications for a placement of pot wine lane beaver fencing and Cherry Hill soil remediation. I so move. Second. Moved by Rachel, seconded by Jason. Rachel? Aye. Andre? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Jason? Aye. Alex? Aye. No, I'm an aye. Okay, um, let's go on to the enforcement compliance issues. First up is 11 trillion way. Um, so we had materials that had been submitted prior to the 626 meeting. Um, I'm sure everybody reviewed this and I discussed with Erin that there were still some non-natives on the list. Um, she's communicated that to Iman. I see Iman here. Um, do we want to have a brief conversation tonight about this or is okay? Yeah. Um, and just for the record, so I emailed um Iman because as I reviewed the list, the I wanted to communicate the fact that there were non-natives on there. Um and he did email me back today and removed the non-natives and provided a list of um, uh, ferns that would be planted. So that information hasn't been shared with the commission because it came in at like 440 today. But um, I will, but the, it looks like the um, species that were noted as non-native have been removed from the list. And do, did you want me to add Iman as a um, panelists so that you guys can talk with them. Sure, Andre, do you want to ask a question before we do that? Go ahead. Yeah, just uh, real briefly, is it the fire bush, one of the ones that, uh, or I forget the name of it, but the uh, flaming bush. Burning bush. Burning bush. Burning bush one of the ones that uh, was removed or? Uh, isn't that you on a miss? I don't. 
Oh, Wing Duonimus. Um, yeah, yeah I, the was, yep. was that on the list? I believe it was. Um, let me just take a quick look here. Um, it's not on this list. I, I mean, I would just say I, I need more time to look at the list and the placement and et cetera, sort of the full scope of things, because this just came in today. And I also asked Aaron to provide um, just a link to the Mass Audubon sort of gardening and landscaping with native species list, which is a really helpful thing for homeowners to find alternatives to some things. Um, Andre, do you still have your hand up? Uh, I did by mistake, but um, so it's, yeah, bleeding heart is the one that I, okay, I, I might have gotten it confused with the, with the burning bush, with the wing euonymus, sorry. And just That's... for the record, this is the updated list here. Um, and let's see if I can do this without making you go crazy. Um, so the native species were, um, they, he maintained the list of native species. And then these are the um, native variety of ferns that are offered through the New England wetland plants, which he listed here. Um, so we're just okay. sharing at first that glance, with you. this looks good, so I'm appreciative that um, it was updated. I guess I don't know if we need to have a further discussion about it tonight since um, we still have to review sort of the full project. Bruce, I'm that I'm misunderstanding. I thought this was the final discussion. Well, it's, we didn't receive the final information until hours before the meeting. So I'm suggesting that it's not the final discussion. There is, in addition to a single plant list, there's also a planting plan, which corresponds to the plant list by like uh, sections and types. And that is what I haven't had a chance to review and would like to. Jason. Yeah, also the there's discussion regarding the demarcation. Um, I don't know if anybody has looked at that, reviewed that. Um, I believe we suggested something like split rail fence and big boulders. And I, I read that it's going to be piles of stone and then lights. It's my understanding that there's already lights within the 100 foot buffer zone, I would like to know if they're proposing to add additional lights on top of the lights that are already there. And then when they say piles of big stones, I would like more information about that. And, you know, cause a pile of some stones, my definition of a big stone and your definition might be different. And so, uh, you know, the idea was there was something that is gonna be permanent easily identifiable and you know just a pile of stones to me is not necessarily does not necessarily meet that criteria okay so iman's here and we have some questions so why don't we just bring him in for a, a brief uh hopefully clarification about those and aaron if you have the sort of schematic that he provided maybe we could pull that up too yep. thanks Welcome. Thank you for joining tonight. Hello. Hi. Can you guys hear me and see me all right? We can. Thanks. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for being responsive about the plant plan. So I think you've heard that the commissioners just have a couple clarifying questions and um, Aaron's going to pull up the the schematic so we have a visual about this. But um, do you want to maybe address what Jason just asked about the demarcation and the lights? Yeah, so for the demarcation, um, I, I don't know if you guys remember the last time um, Aaron had recommended I review your guys' prior meeting to get an idea of what the concerns were and how you guys were um, hoping to go about it. To answer um, what Jason was saying, I'm not sure if it's clear in the pictures I provided in the email that I sent Aaron, um, but I showed pictures to show um, basically you can see these rebar in the ground, which is what the surveyor put up. Uh, I'm not sure if you recall, originally there was some concerns that we didn't measure 100 feet kind of like um, 
horizontally, rather we measured 100 feet just going down the slope. And obviously that's not the way to do it. So we had the surveyor come out um, as requested and you can see they, they demarcated that area with the rebar that has the orange um, kind of tag um, tied to the top of it. And <clears throat> for what it's worth, the, the demarcation is all behind what we had originally measured where that black plastic barrier is. There is some area towards, um, like if you're walking in the backyards to the right that you'll see, um, it, like just uh, the rebar is a little bit in the grass, um, but it's a very small area and we can easily just with a shovel, just remove that um, that that grass, that uh, the sod on top. It's really like the distance between this rock pile and the fence there that you're seeing in that picture that you just went by. Um, that's really the uh, the only area. This rock pile, we basically figured, because um, I remember there was some people who suggested using um, like USGS markers. And then uh, somebody else mentioned, well, you know, there's so much, so many trees uh, from this canopy, it's all going to fall down and cover the USGS markers. Um, and um, I, I did mention, I don't know if you guys had a chance since last week to go over the proposal. Um, the only thing that's changed from it is um, per Aaron's um, email this morning uh, around like 1130, I, all I changed was um, removing the non-native plants and adding those ferns. So everything else is is the same from, um, from two weeks prior. Um, so with regards to the fence, um, we were hoping not to have something that would be um, kind of looking a little unnatural back there. Um, we understand the town's concerns with wanting to have something that in the event that let's say, you know, and you some somebody else buys this property in the future that it's clearly demarcated. So you guys don't have to worry about this again. And and that makes sense. So we we thought leaving the rebar in <clears throat> was obviously we thought um kind of a obvious idea, but just so that it's not something dangerous for somebody to like walk on or something like that. And also to add to the idea of having something be kind of more um more obvious and not something that could just be kind of eroded away without putting large rocks like the ones here together um, every like six or so feet um, spaced out from each other would be a good way to do that. And it would be pretty obvious um, to, to just address what Jason mentioned earlier about light fixtures. All the light fixtures are within the um, with they're, they're not in the 100 foot boundary. They're on the other side on the correct side. Um, there were some, like if you look at some of the, there was one picture, I believe, where you'll see there's um, this concrete stump that's right next to um, a tree. Um, and I know some people um, were concerned in your previous meetings that removing it might disturb the ground even further. Um, that one, um, it's kind of like, if you look at the picture, it's kind of just like elevated. And it's it's pretty easy to actually um we, this one right here in that picture we were able to remove this with like virtually no disturbance um and and we took out anything that's on the wrong side um um this beyond that for the um the demarcation um we thought that you know kind of a combination of you know leaving the rebar in and then those larger stone piles placed around them in addition to basically just the kind of wild um, or the more natural looking growth that would establish there from the things we've planted. Um, I'm sorry, I wish I provided you guys with more current photos. These ones from this email that Aaron's showing are from a couple or from two two weeks ago or so. Um, so there's definitely more ground cover now. I know one of the concerns was to have something like 75% um, of the, the ground cover established. And so we thought that in an effort to basically, because I remember originally um, soil erosion was a big concern. So, you know, we, we put down um, a bunch of the so the the wild bird seed mix that we got from New England wet plants um, under the soil erosion blankets, and we put some straw on top of it. Um, and um, I think now really, I was just, what we were suggesting was planting more of these native um, plants um, to basically just achieve that ground cover sooner and ideally contribute to, you know, basically prevent uh, preventing soil erosion. Um, right now, if you go there and you check it out, you'll see things aren't moving, things aren't really eroding. It looks very natural. It's clearly getting back to the state it was in before. And I think with time, you'll see that uh, it shouldn't be too long, especially after the fall. Um, once the foliage comes down, um, we'll be able to, to see it like it was before. Um, I think it would definitely be beneficial to have 
um because like I, I wanted to take pictures with like a different angle on the lens of the cam of the the iphone i was using but it also can kind of distort the view so this is just the normal camera mode not the fisheye lens um and i think if somebody were to come out aaron or anybody else wanted to come out and look at it um i think you guys would see that a lot of the concerns have been kind of addressed i think at this point the things that um we were really just um it was coming down to was making sure that anything within that 100 foot boundary is removed amended or addressed which it has been there should be nothing beyond those um uh the rebars with the orange flags on it and also um to basically just try and get that ground cover up um so I hope that answers some of you guys' questions. Obviously, if there's anything else you guys want to ask, I'm I'm here for you to answer your questions. And I really appreciate you guys giving us your input on um, which plants are and aren't native. I thought that that list um, I had double checked and those were all native. Um, and I was really surprised that a lot of them weren't. So um, uh, thank you guys for catching that. Thanks, Iman. Uh, commissioner, questions, comments? Jason, go ahead. I see one photo of, you know, a pile of stones. Um, they don't look to be that big to me. Um, you know, certainly some of them are pretty easily moved. I would, I would just, if this is what you're going to go with, um, I'd like to see, is there, is that line of them in place now? Like, I'd like to see some photos. Yeah. Photos if that whole line is in place. Um, and if you are going to be, if you're going to be relying on the rebar, I I think you need to cap it. Uh, those orange flags are nice for like looking, but having a piece of metal sticking out of the ground, uh, it, it can be really dangerous. And th so they, they, if they're going to be there, like I'm not, I'm saying from a safety standpoint, they probably should be capped. Yeah, I understand. So I, I um, right now we don't have it all laid out. This is just one pile that we were using as an example. We didn't want to move too much stuff around until we were sure what um, would be acceptable by you guys. Um, in terms of the size of the rocks, I'd say this rock pile, if you were to stay next to it, would probably go like um, some, it would probably as high as like around between your, your um, the middle of your shin and your, your knee um it's about that height um but yeah they, they they are rocks i mean the smaller ones can definitely be moved by hand those larger ones are a little heavier and harder um we were concerned not using too big of rocks because i know there was concern about getting heavy machinery back there and not disturbing the the ground further um we would be perfectly happy to remove the rebar and just have like a rock pile or something like that um maybe even with larger rocks um, we thought leaving the orange rebar was just good so that for future reference, there's something to market. But I couldn't agree more with you about the um, the the safety issue of the the top of the rebar. Um, and um, if I think if we were to go with something like this where the rocks are placed around it, we would definitely cap it and put more things around it to make it safer. Whatever you guys would be okay with, we'd be we'd be happy to do. Yeah, I mean, I would still prefer the USGS markers as instead of the rebar um you know they're they're easy to find from my understanding even if they get covered up but um i would like to see a picture of the like the whole rock pile yeah we got we have um some stone there um that's been used for landscaping so i don't think it would be too much of an issue for me to um set some of it up and show it to you guys what it might look like and i don't think like i said it would disturb too much for us to do that and then if need be remove it or not um so i, I could probably get that done before the end of the week um and then send some uh, pictures or obviously invite you guys to come and inspect it in person that might be even better um i know one other thing that somebody suggested was um I think if you look at one of the pictures, if you go to the last picture, you'll see there's um it's a picture of that um that orange rebar, but then also to the left of it, you'll see there's kind of a circular cap in the ground. And um that's from like one of the electrical boxes from the things that we had moved. And um, you know, we 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 did that so it'd just basically be more hidden, but also um we thought that that might that could potentially serve as a as kind of a marker. Um um, and it is actually like a couple feet inside from the hundred feet buffer, so it is uh, even further uh, with uh, beyond the hundred buffer, not in it. Sorry. 
Um, I wasn't sure if that's something that um, you might want to consider. Um, Aaron, did you have a question? Okay. Um, more of a clarification, just I wanted to make sure, well, I guess one thing, from a staff standpoint, I would really like the rebar to stay. Um, I think okay. the, the, the survey was conducted, the survey is accurate, and when we start pulling out rebar survey markers, it introduces the potential for things to get moved around and changed, mm -hmm. and I think it's really important for that to be monumented in a very permanent way and so I feel like the rebar serves that purpose and then the other thing was the the rock mounds from my site visit out there the rock mounds were to be put over the rebar monument yeah. so kind of to um keep them from being a a, a hazard to somebody but mm -hmm. also like a visual cue of where they are located and then you know if you're adding them every six feet then obviously you you might have some additional ones because i think there's only what like four rebar markers are, you know along the property boundary or yeah along i think it's like four or five boundary. or six something like that yeah uh -huh. yeah i just wanted um, to make sure that was clear yeah yeah no thank you for clarifying um um, I think initially I thought that that's what you guys wanted, and then I wasn't sure if maybe you guys were okay with it being removed in light of something else, just because it's not a safety hazard. Either way, whether we can put rocks on it or a cap on it, or even put something kind of sustainable or spongy around it, you know, so it's not a hazard. I think any of those would be fine with us. But yeah, we're we're okay with leaving the rebar in there. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. I I agree. Please leave the rebar that delineates mm -hmm. that. Um... Okay that surveyed line, it'll be important for any future homeowner to be clear about some kind of uh, boundary at that point. And I, I do like the capped, the monumented rebar, um, but I'm fine with the rock struck around it if you wanna give it more structure. Um, there is maybe now that you've removed from the plant list, several species, a slight disconnect between the, um, schematics reference to the list and what's on the list because it references like uh, thirds so mm -hmm. maybe uh, if you could take I would also really appreciate some current pictures to see what's coming okay. up there and just what it looks mm -hmm. like and and that in, um, and then the updated plant list I think would be a good way to get us to the finish line for the next meeting okay um so unless you guys have any other recommendations for the plant list um I guess I would really just be saying specifically what we would plan on planting and where um and then for the for the schematic do you want me to just be a little more clear with what's going where um yeah, I just sure. kind of use this, yeah, okay I, I'll try to update that as well um I just tried to use that to give like a general idea of the space and the shape. And um, I think yeah. it'll obviously be easier when, if, if and when any of you guys come out to see it. Um, um, right now, it's a lot of like, um, like if you look at this picture, let me see, this is the, like between the third and fourth and the fifth picture, it's a lot of stuff like that. Newland Wet Plants said that the seed mix they gave us was basically gonna eventually result in like, um, like kind of like a waist high meadow of native wetland plants. Um, so I think it's, it, this is from two weeks ago. So it's basically just more of this, um, but I'll definitely get you guys pictures um, tomorrow. I can send it over to Aaron um, or to any of you directly, if that's easier. Yeah, I just sent it to Aaron. And I, I mean, my intention is just to get a sense of what is growing there and what can grow there. It's not really a wet, it's not wetland. It's the buffer to the wetland. So it is sort of an upland drier forest. So I just kind of want to get a sense of what's going in and hopefully save you some work for, or, you know, planting. Yeah, that, that might makes not sense. Stick. So mm -hmm. we can just give that a look and, and get that resolved. Okay. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? Okay. Well, thank you for coming tonight and um, yeah, for of course. providing thank you guys for your time. Time. Have a good night. You too. Karen, I can't dismiss anyone. Okay. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone. So then let's just get rid of the next one because I think it's just basically an update that Wildflower Drive has um, provided some stubs and contracts for wetland delineation. So there's been movement on that. And Aaron was notified that there that's going to be surveyed. Um, Aaron and I discussed um, having some 
sort of indication about when it would be surveyed by and providing some guidance that we'd like to see that be done by the August, late August meeting. So um, that would have been a two or three months of time to get that done. Any questions, comments about Wildflower? Nope. So just, just to be yeah, clear, yeah. you I'll be telling the applicant that we expect to have a plan in hand, preferably a notice of intent application by August 28th. That would be my preference. Does okay. anyone? Okay, sounds good. Okay. Okay, now let's move on to our first hearing. Um, General procedures for fairness to all applicants. Each hearing has 20 dedicated minutes on the agenda, five minutes from staff, five minutes from the applicant, five minutes for public comment, five minutes from the commissioners. All materials are required by the Wednesday prior to the meeting at close of business. And for all presenters, please clearly state your name, the address of the project, who are you representing and preferred pronouns. Um, same goes for members of the public address and name and preferred pronouns. Okay, um, so our first hearing is SWCA on behalf of University of Massachusetts for an after the fact notice of intent application for the construction of a pavilion and associated site work at Orchard Hill residential area at 152 Orchard Hill Drive. The project includes work within a 100 foot buffer to bordering vegetated wetlands WPA and within the Amherst bylaw jurisdictional waterway. Um, I did watch on double time your hearing from last time, so thank you for the um, attention you gave this. And Erin, um, is there anybody here from the project? I understand we're moving it, but it sounds like there might be just some updates for the commissioners based on that last conversation. Okay. Yeah, um, the applicant is not planning to attend tonight. Um, I had an almost two hour meeting um, last week with UMass, they they have hired a third party SWIP inspector um, besides the contractor to conduct um, inspections of the site, which I think was a, a really great um, thing for them to do. They've also, they provided a report to the commission, which I put in the project folder, basically outlining a series of um, stabilization measures, um, uh, sediment control measures um, and um, just improvements to the the BMPs that they have on site to deal with stormwater runoff. Um, there are still some outstanding um, issues related to the design and and other things, um, which I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on, but partially it has to do with the sizing of the culvert that's proposed for the access road. And so um, that was one of the things that we discussed at length um, at the meeting last week, and they're working to try to find a design solution for that. Thanks, Erin. And were you there today to check it out? <laughs> yes, I was. Um, I did a really in-depth um, site inspection today. Um, my primary um, purpose to be on site was that I was basically looking for stormwater discharges into the wetland. And so I kind of did a transect search um, from one end, like on Eastman Lane, all the way up to Orchard Hill Drive, um, kind of going back and forth in the wetland along the tree line uh, where the wetland boundary is located. Um, I didn't see any discharges into the flagged wetland area. Um, I guess I did I did locate where sediment discharges did occur. Um, and so I know where those discharge points are now uh, that I've done some sort of site recon. And I also took photos, which I have been unable to download because it was like at the end of the day today of some of the site, site stabilization measures. One thing I did observe was the there are a ton of erosion control blankets that they installed out there and none of them are biodegradable. They all have that like um, plastic netting on them, which I know was a wildlife hazard. So, um, but at least there's something down <laughs> to stabilize the ground and there is vegetation coming up under those mats. So I'm hopeful by our next meeting that those plastic, that plastic netting can be removed where those areas have been stabilized. Thanks, Erin. I I want to try and remember with the help of everybody to sort of get it into our language that we require the biodegradable ones when we ever we talk about the mats because I don't 
I don't know if we ever preface it with that, but um, just to get out ahead of it. Uh, I saw it was hand. mentioned it was on okay. site visits, but it's, you know, lost in translation. Yeah. It, you know, it, it is what it is. I saw a hand up. Um, did Bruce, go ahead. No, okay, you're all good. Rachel. Just want to caution that um, I've had experience with a contractor installing those type of mats as a temporary solution. Um, but once uh, vegetation grows through the mats, you have to rip it out and you basically redisturb the whole site again. So um, that's something that they may want to consider um, when they remove them and when they would replace them with something biodegradable. Erin, is that something that you can communicate them um, to them soon, just that that's something that we had discussed and, you know, unfortunately it wasn't communicated necessarily at the many multiple redundant times, but um, that we will expect to be replaced and without severe disturbance with um, vegetation being pulled up. Yeah, Oops. I have to communicate with them on some other items so I can okay. follow up on that. Thank you. Okay, I saw another hand. Andre. Mine. Yeah, just seconding uh, Rachel's uh statement there I, I did landscaping a long time ago and uh i remember ripping those things out and uh you just can't get it all out it's and you're destroying the uh the the ground uh it it, it ends up going into the ground and you know it's just it's a absolute mess so i fully agree with you uh michelle that uh we need to be requiring um, from here on that the the matting be uh, uh, biodegradable. Sandra, Jason, isn't that something that we talked about putting into our boilerplate conditions? I know. Yeah, it is in our boilerplate conditions. They just don't have an order of conditions. Um, yeah. But you know, when we were out on site, I've I've met on site with the contractor multiple times and said. We need to get some biodegradable mats out here, some like jute nash, jute style nets, um, jute style blankets out here. Um, and that was way before our meeting. So um, I think they came out of our meeting, like wanting to do some immediate measures and that that comment that I had made previously, just they, it was either forgotten or lost, um, but I I will reiterate to them the requirement and tell them that they have to fix it. I, I need to speak to them on some other items as well. So I'll circle back with them uh, tomorrow and um, make sure those items are addressed. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, I, I can see why it happened. So every time we talk about biodegradable matting, we're batting, we talk about biodegradable matting from here on out. So that's just what it's called for us. <laughs> okay. Um, then I think unless anyone has anything else to say, we're looking for a motion to continue this. Um, uh, motion to continue the public hearing for DEP number 0890738 Mass, UMass 152 Orchard Hill Drive and Illinois Day, 82824 at 7 40 p.m. So moved. I second. Based on the motion, Rachel on the second. Rachel? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Jason? Aye. Alex? Yeah. You're muted, Alex. Aye. Thanks. Andre? Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay. On to hearing number two. I saw some folks here for this. Um, so we have a notice of intent the engineer on behalf of Amherst College for building additions. Pavement rehabilitation, stormwater improvements, resource area restoration, and energy decarbonization at 151 and 0 College Street, Map 14B, Lot 165, and Map 14D, Lot 1. The project includes work within the 100 foot buffer to bordering vegetated wetlands and bank and bank restoration. And I see some yeah. folks raising their hands. I think I'll, I'll, I'll get them. I'm just <laughs> sorry. It's okay. It's I I've got to close my other screens. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, you know, we discovered, so just by for an update for Michelle, um, at the last meeting, um, it was discovered that, and I don't know why, but 
I can I, I was able to promote people to panelists and when I promoted them they were able to share their their you know video and share the documents like the plans but it when Andre promoted them they were not so I don't know if the same is true for you but just to make sure that we know in the future that that can occur got it good to know welcome Bucky welcome Darren Thanks for joining tonight. Um, all right, Erin, do you want your five minutes to update us? Yeah. So um, prior to the last meeting, I had submitted um, a, a memo with several comments and questions and also um, requested revisions to the operation and maintenance plan and a couple additional forms. Um, I received uh, responses to the comments, um, and I felt that the comments were adequately addressed. The operation and maintenance plan for the stormwater management system was updated. I received the TSS removal worksheets, um, and I am satisfied that this project um, meets and exceeds the stormwater management standards for Massachusetts and under our local um, wetland bylaw. Uh, the only sort of area where under our local stormwater bylaw is that we're supposed to have 90% TSS um, removal, but this is a redevelopment project and I believe there is some flexibility there. I tried to email the town engineer um, to get his take on it, but I didn't hear back. But based on all things considered, I am prepared to um, recommend approval tonight and I've drafted an order of conditions. Um, we did have a little bit of offline conversation this afternoon about one of the conditions relative to the weekly monitoring reports. So I don't know if it would be helpful to just touch base on that condition really quickly with the applicant um, to see what they're comfortable with. Um, am I am I remembering correctly, Darren, that um, you guys mentioned uh, Fraggle Rock as a the stormwater person, or did I get that wrong? Okay. No, no, that's correct. And, and, um, you know, thank you again for all the time working with us and, uh, getting us feedback on the memo and sending along the draft order of conditions. Um, yeah, that one, I think I was just, it probably would have been about a, you know, a 90 second conversation and instead it was a few emails, you know, um, no, you know, we're hiring Fraggle Rock. They're on board already with the, with the projects on the, as it's progressing across the other side of campus. So we already have them on board and, what I intend to do is just, you know, really review their scope of work closely. And if we need to make any adjustments with regards to them, like submitting you stuff weekly and making sure it has what you're requesting in there. Because mm -hmm. my initial impression was just like, wow, that's, they're asking for a lot every week and it could be hard to accomplish on a consistent basis. Cause I just want to make sure, you know, we're hitting the letter of the requirements throughout, you know, that, that was my only thing. I want to make sure that we were, you know, agreeing to something that was like consistently achievable <laughs> during a very busy construction season mm -hmm. um but I, I felt like we landed in a good place and i appreciate your uh your responses okay great so um i can run through the draft if folks would like or if folks um have reviewed the draft um pretty sort of standard conditions um there was one question or one condition relative to stockpiling which um I, and again, it may have just been um, in the rush that I was unable to find the stockpile locations on the plan set, um, which is completely fine to identify in the field and provide containment measures for. Um, and there, you know, there was some sort of site specific um, conditions relative to um, doing pre-construction meetings at the various phases of the project because there's sort of a couple phases relative to the um, drilling of the geothermal wells and the um, work on the stormwater um, updates and, and the parking area and so forth. So just to make sure that we're sort of in unison with our, um, as the project proceeds and um, our typical sign-offs um, for, you know, a pre-construction meeting where the contractor signs off on the order of conditions that they've reviewed it. Erin, do you want to throw it up so you don't have to read through it? <laughs> yeah, and I'm not okay. reading it verbatim. All I'm right. just sort of... Uh... All right. Um, presumably the 
commissioners have had a chance to look at it. So I'm just going to go to the commissioner questions. I think Bruce had his hand up first. So go ahead, Bruce. It's not really a question. Um, two things. I just want to uh, appreciate that when I went out there, um, that the new um, erosion control, um, I forget the term for them, but they're new and they're extensive and it, it really was needed because I also, and um, Alex can speak for himself, but he was out there in a quite torrential rain and, and could see what was happening with the water coming off the parking lot. So it's really good that you got that out there right away. And um, if we got what Mr. Sparkle provided every time from every applicant, I would be a very happy commissioner. Thank you very much. This is this is excellent. Thanks, Bruce, and also Alex for being out there in the torrential downpour, and of course, um, they're you know, it's putting together a good plan. Uh, Andre, go ahead. Uh, more than a, I, I suppose it is a question. It's more of a, a procedural type thing. Um, I'm seeing that on the uh, on the two attachments uh, to the uh, that we've got the one for the uh, state and the one for the uh, for the town um, regulations with the special conditions that is the special conditions attachments um, number a1 uh, lists uh, resource area boundaries were confirm confirmed as accurate as part of ORAD DEP number 089-0734. Um, yet the number for uh, the project is 0739. Just checking to make sure that our numbers are, uh, that that's from a different, um, from something else and uh, that our numbers aren't skewed. Right. So um, I want to say like a month, six weeks ago or so, uh, we did a um, an ANRAD application where we reviewed the resource area boundaries out there. Um, and um, I think Rachel and Alex, we were out on the site visit. We walked the entire wetland boundary and uh, adjusted several flags. So that's just um, identifying that the that the delineation was confirmed as part of that order and that um, that's why that DEP file number is referenced because it's associated with that um, resource area review. All right. Thank you. That's that was it. Very simple. Thanks, Andre. Um, OK, I'm just going to give a heads up to the public that if there's any public comment, just raise your hand now and I'll get to you after the commissioners. Rachel. Um, it, it appears there might be a Scribner's error on the attachment to for the town of Amherst. It, it references another project, and but I, I think that the rest of it applies, right? It's just that yeah, one. I did fix that. I use a oh. boilerplate template for every project, and somehow that one stuck on there from the Fort River project. So I did remove that, but thank you guys for oh. proofing me. Oh, the rubber <laughs> surfacing? Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. It's that, from that the template a... uh, from the... I use the the um, conditions template for for basically every project, our boilerplate, and so for some reason that hung on in the template, so I removed it. Oh. Jason, yeah, I just I have two questions about something that was on the ENS plans that were provided. One is that there appears to be now a temporary sediment trap that's being excavated. And I don't recall having seen that on our previous exhibits that we looked at. Um, just want to ask one, is that is the intention to truck off all of the material or will that material then be stockpiled on site that's excavated to make that uh, sediment trap? Is it okay for me to go ahead? Oh, yes, please do. Um, yeah, that that was part of our. It's like a six, a six phase ENS um, plan set, and we haven't adjusted that that whatsoever. Um, the the intent is to get that installed early in the process, of course, 
and the material will be excavated and taken off of that part of campus. And we have a stockpile area on another part of campus and we go to that stockpile area. And will those stockpiles be protected on that part of campus? Yes. Is that a, another construction site? Or is that just a simply like a staging area? Yeah, it's kind of like a staging area. We're going to have a bunch of like, our, you know, our landscaping materials that we use and where we store our old granite that we eventually reuse. And um, it's kind of like a back of house area we use for stockpiling. And we've been using it for some time. Okay. The other question is on the, the southern end of these exhibits, uh, there's a note, there's a call out saying provide and install erosion control silt sack at outlet of storm system. Can one of you talk, is that, I don't, I didn't see a detail for that. Is that like a sack on the end of the pipe? How is that going to work? And um, uh, just, just curious why that, that specifically is on there. Okay. Which, do you mind saying which drawing you're on? Uh, I, yeah, hold on one second. Um, she EC C601 shows it, the interim plan phase one. Yeah, it's on, I think, but all it, of I them. think other sheets as well. Yes. 601, 602, 603. Is that at the stormwater outfall from the. Um, yes, this is yeah. at the, the Seymour shed um, swale or Seymour yeah. building swale. Um, and that the note is on the Salas O'Brien plan. And I think presently we don't have a representative from Salas O'Brien here. Um, and I also don't think I can definitively describe what they are talking about. I do know that um, my plan to a degree that has the other re remediation, which goes far beyond what the Salas O'Brien plan does, uh, has to a degree a super, maybe a superseding plan through there for, you know, excavating the, the silt out of there, putting in a series of check dams through there as well. Um, it may be possible that Salas O'Brien is, is planning on installing um, a, a large dewatering sack, um, which are capable of uh, containing silt and allowing water to filter through and for, for a certain phase of the project. Um, I know they're, they're trying to protect that resource area but the exact nature of that BMP, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not able to explain. Okay, yeah, because it's going. It appears to be discharging right into the wetland. So, um, and I have, I have a thought on that. Um, the the existing stormwater outlet that comes into that swale is that's a whole existing stormwater system, and it's going to be essentially online during the repair of the swale. So the swale is actually a stormwater system in and of itself, although it hasn't been maintained and it's kind of bounced back as wetland. Um, and so I suspect that the reason for that is to protect that area um, so that in the course of the um, repairs that are made to the swale, it will potentially prevent additional sediment from coming down that through that existing stormwater system and entering into that swale while work is going on um, to restore it to its normal function. But that's just a <laughs> an assumption on my part um, because just knowing how that system is going to work and also they're tying in an additional infiltration chamber upstream um, of that outlet point so that they don't have to disturb to um, put a new outlet from the infiltration chamber. So in the course of making that um, utility connection of the discharge of the infiltration chamber to the pipe that discharges to that location, it may also be an additional sort of fail-safe measure to prevent any sediment that might enter the system and discharge into the swale. Just a thought. Yeah, I'll say between Bucky and and um, and Aaron, like I, I think you're both capturing my impression as well. I can call the engineer, I can go mute myself and call the engineer. Um, but you know, given Aaron the requirement that we have the the pre construction walkthroughs and you get to review the BMPs before activities truly get underway, we do have that as a safeguard here if it is something that you don't like. Um, but if it's good timing, I'll I'll try to make a quick phone call and. 
be right back with you. Um, yeah, Jason and commissioners, I, I, there's a lot of uncertainty and speculation, but there, as you said, Darren, there's safeguards. So um, how do people feel about moving forward based on the safeguard with um, maybe an update if we, an administrative change, if we need to change this? Yeah, I think it just needs to be addressed in SWIP as far and with the detail. And I just, overall, my overall concern is I want to make sure that that is not being relied upon as the only BMP, uh, but rather a safeguard and not just the only BMP that the board is going to pass through prior to entering that system or exiting the system. Okay. Um, Aaron, what, do, what are your thoughts on being able to I'm directly? Okay. I'm still completely comfortable approving this tonight and working out those sort of details. Um, I did want to just point out to Jason um, on condition three, the comment that he had made about the excavation of materials and the storage of materials offsite, I did address that in condition three so that where they're stockpiling, I want to see where it's located and make sure there's protection there. I generally know the area that Darren's talking about um, in the back of campus where they do sort of their stockpiling. And I know that there's erosion controls already that are pretty much permanently <laughs> installed around that location. But I would like to see it once it's placed there and make sure it's stable um, as well. So that's conditioned into the order. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. Um... Show of hands from commissioners who's ready to close the public hearing tonight. Okay, it looks like everybody is. Um, okay, Bucky, Darren, thank you. And yeah, maybe if we could get some communication about that um, tomorrow or something, just for clarification, we get a heads up on that, great. Okay, um, I see no public comment. I see Alex's hand up. Go ahead, Alex. You're muted, Alex. Darn. <laughs> the last time we met, I brought up uh, a topic which is not related to what's in front of us, but seems that Amherst College is uh, uh, not going to be before us again. I thought I would with, um, indulge, perhaps you'd indulge me to bring that up again. And that has to do with Fearing Brook. And um, um, I did visit Fearing Brook when it was really raining. It was the night when we had the tornado warnings and a lot of water had come down. And I stood underneath that tree and watched the water pour out of that uh, pipe that was contained Fearing Brook and just, you know, dump into uh, the stream. And I've suggested during the site visit and during this meeting that perhaps when you get through this project that we could have another project separate from this where Amherst, the town of Amherst would partner with the college and try and do something to remediate the damage that the town is doing to Fearing Brook. And as a precursor to that, I would like to see if the commissioners would like to have a site visit to the Amherst College site specifically to see Air Fearing Brook so that when we talk about this in the future, you know what it looks like and the damage that's being done. It is being done by the town of Amherst and I know it was set up a long time ago, but we would never allow a private citizen to damage a brook like the town is. And as the rain events get stronger and more frequent, it's only gonna get worse. And so it seems timely uh, to talk to a willing partner like Amherst College about a partnership between the town and the college to work on their site. It would involve grant writing and all that kind of stuff. But uh, uh, so far, I've got positive feedback from um, Darren and uh, others uh, on this project. And so the first thing might be to have a site visit so commissioners could see what we're talking about. And I don't want to get in the way of the project that is now that Amherst College has now got in front of us. That's going to be very time consuming and just kind of fit it in where it can. That's all I had to say. Thank you. You're muted, Michelle. 
Thanks, Alex. Um, all well heard. And um, we move, we're going to have to move on with this hearing tonight, but uh, maybe this is something we could table for another time um, between commissioners and sort of wrap our heads around it. Um, okay, so for tonight, I think we're ready to make this motion to close a public hearing and issue their orders of conditions. I move Bruce. close the public hearing and issue order of conditions for 151 and 0 College Street, DEP number 0890739, with the standard boilerplate conditions under both the, wet, the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and Wetlands Protection Town of Hammers General Bylaws, Article 3.31 and regulations with the noted additional conditions. Second. Bruce on the motion, Andre on the second. Andre? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Jason? Aye. Rachel? Abstain. Alex? Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, thank you, Bucky. Thank you, Darren. Uh, Good morning. Pleasure, Was folks. Thank you so much for working with us. And I know I'll be seeing you again soon. Thank you for the good Thank work. You. Thank Bye. you very much. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Um, so we did our emergency certifications. We talked about our enforcement. We did the minor administrative change. I think the only thing left on our agenda is monitoring reports and public comment. So if there's any public comment, please raise your hand now and I'll get to the room. And is there anything you'd like to briefly talk about the monitoring reports? Are they in our folders for us? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the monitoring reports were a little light this week. Um, and I'll update um, the next go round with there'll be a much bigger batch in August because of the multiple weeks between now and that meeting. Um, but they're, for the most part, sites are doing pretty well. The stabilization measures at um, Fort River um, are in process of being fully installed. So um, that was sort of the one uh, major compliance issue relative to the um, stabilization plan that was sort of hanging out, but it's um, getting buttoned up right now. Um, Great. Um, all right. I don't see any public comment. I guess the last thing is just a reminder that we will, are we skipping a meeting? In August 6th, or are you? Yeah, okay. August so 14th is, um, that meeting is canceled for us to have a little summer break, and then we'll be back on August 28th. Great. All right. Well, um, I'm ready to let everybody go early here and um, have a nice August vacation. <laughs> um, well moved. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Looking for a second. Second. All right. Uh, Rachel. Hi. Right. Bruce. Hi. Jason. Hi. Alex. Hi. Andre. Hi. And I'm an I. All right. Have a good rest of your summer, guys, and we'll see you at the end. Enjoy, everyone. Good night, night everyone. See you, everybody. Good night. <laughs>